Welcome back, my friends. Now we're going to take a look at Metro Redux. Hugh, welcome to the show. Hi, good to be here. And thank you for uh, packaging these two games together and uh, putting them out on our new consoles. Metro yeah, Redux. it's been a uh, you know quite a, quite an interesting experience for us. We've, we've basically got these two games. First one we released back in 2010. Uh, the sequel from from last year, and we had this opportunity. I think it's very rare for a developer to be able to approach this kind of remaster project mm -hmm. themselves. They normally get farmed out to a third party with a very specific brief. So this was really like a, a once in a lifetime opportunity for the studio to go back, revisit, and re-edit their original content. Yeah, I think we've got footage of the game that we can take a look at here. But what do you think? Uh, like when you when you were given the chance to revisit the game, polish it up, what were you most excited about? Well. We learned a lot, a lot of lessons between the between the two games. 2033 was our first release back in 2010. You know, Foray Games, new studio, based on their own uh, their, their own in-house uh, in-house engine. The first outing for the tech, it always looked spectacular on on PC. It was kind of a, a little rough around the edges in, in places, um, and we learned a, a lot of lessons from that development experience. Uh, and we we put a lot of those lessons into the Last Light, the sequel, which I think everyone has agreed was was superior in many ways. Mm. So. When we came to rebuild 2033, we actually rebuilt the game in the new advanced Last Light framework. So we have huge improvements from a technological perspective, uh, improved lighting, uh, dynamic weather, um, and then from a gameplay perspective, we, we overhauled the AI, the way the weapons handle. Um, all of these improvements are now carried over into Metro 2033. So even if you play the original game, you're actually gonna find uh, that the experience has been kind of completely transformed. Mm. I'm actually a big fan of you know, remasters, uh, definitive editions, that whole thing. The Tomb Raider definitive edition that came out. Uh -huh. uh, let's bring the best games from last gen, uh, make them look as, as, as good as possible on our brand new consoles. I think that's a great thing. Yeah, but you know, for, for, for these guys at 4A, I mean, we've always considered Metro to be a, a, a next gen game mm. right from the, the start. I mean, the high end PC skew is, you know, it's, it's, it's already next gen in terms of look and visuals. And really, the, we were kind of held back by the last uh, the last generation of consoles. What you're going to see now with these uh, these Xbox One and PS4 versions is something as, as close as we can get to that super high-end PC experience that you know people would pay thousands of pounds to upgrade their, yeah. their PC to sure. handle. So we're able to run these at 60 frames per second uh, with with 1080p on, on PS4. Uh, the previous console versions were you know 30 frames per second and much lower frame buffers. Um, so yeah, you, you get the complete visual experience, as I say, kind of, kind of up to par with that high-end PC experience now. Sure. So for the gamers out there that haven't played a Metro game, what is this series all about? So the series is actually based on, uh, on, on the works of this Russian novelist, Dmitry Glukovsky. Uh, he says he was inspired by two things, playing Fallout, uh, the original there Fallout, and then traveling to school on the Moscow Metro every day. And he began to hear stories about the Moscow Metro, how it was actually designed and built to be a, a genuine uh, nuclear shelter. So in the event of, a, of a, an atomic bomb dropping, the population would race for the, the metro stations and uh, they'd have supplies and bunkers under there to kind of keep them alive uh, for, for as long as possible. So that's really the, the premise of the game. It's set in the year 2033, about 20 years after this, uh, this nuclear war, and you have uh, the remnants of the human race trying to eke out their survival in the uh, in in the Moscow in the Moscow metro in these uh, bunkers underground, so uh, yeah, pretty in, pretty intense background, and it, I guess it it's one of those classic story-driven uh, single-player experiences, very much in the Half-Life mold. That was a big um, big you know big inspiration That's, for the yeah. for the studio. Um, their previous experience was also in in post-apocalyptic games. A lot of the original guys came from GSC, the guys behind Stalker. Um, when they split away to form 4A games, they really wanted to, to go for that, um, you know, cinematic uh, single-player campaign. As I say, very much inspired by Half-Life, they were looking for the right material to, to base it on. And Dimitri's first novel, 2033, um, he was kind of kind of a progressive-thinking guy. He actually published the novel online, free to read for anyone, cool. and uh, people would write into him, and they'd. Um, you know, they they make suggestions and, and amendments, and the guys at 4A actually encountered it online. Prof, the creative director, said uh, he was directed to it by a friend, stayed up all night uh, reading it, and then contacted Dimitri and said, look, we want to make this game. We think this is the perfect thing to, to, to build it on. So it was a really 
collaborative uh, experience uh, b between the two. Dimitri uh, helped them adapt his original novel into this kind of epic single-player campaign. He also contributed a lot of the a lot of the dialogue and you know all of the, the background storytelling within the uh, within the game. Right now, are we seeing 2033? Yeah, so you're seeing 2033. So this is uh, this is the level Dead City. It's your your kind of your first experience up on the up on the surface. Uh, Metro's got a lot of survival horror um, yeah. kind of influences in there as well. It's very uh, resource management um, intensive kind of uh, survival mechanics. So you have your, your gas mask that has a, a limited air supply. Your watch is actually telling you the number of minutes and seconds that you have left to breathe. Yeah, I love and that. And your, your mask will frost up around the edges. You'll see drops of condensation appear. Um, and you have to scavenge for filters to, to, to swap out in your mask to give you, uh, to give you more air supply. Um, your ammunition is also in, in limited supply. And uh, in this post-apocalyptic world of the Metro, your, your ammunition actually also doubles as currency. Sure. So you have these, these military-grade rounds that you use to trade, to buy new weapons, to upgrade your, uh, upgrade your weapons. But if you ever run out of your normal bullets, you can actually load them into your gun. They do more damage because they're manufactured before the apocalypse. They have military-grade gunpowder, so they do more, do more damage. But by firing your gun, you're actually spending away your, or shooting away your, your currency. Uh, you can see just there that the, the guy wiping blood and gore off his mask. This is one of the new features that we actually added into the into the sequel, Last Very Light. Cool. So um, when we approached Metro 2033, we, we, we basically rebuilt the original game using the advanced engine uh, and the, the advanced gameplay framework from the sequel. So a lot of the improved mechanics, such as the mask wipe, uh, the feel of the, the weapons are now there and present in Metro 2033. And uh, we've completely overhauled the outdoor environments as well. Uh, in the first game, our, our lighting engine was really good at doing interior lights, so kind of flickering candle lights and torch lights. Our outdoor areas were kind of a bit gray and, and flat and lifeless by comparison. They sort of had a, a bleak, eerie charm of their, of, of their own. Um, but with the new engine, we have global illumination. It gives us much more naturalistic uh, lighting in the outdoor, um, in the outdoor areas. Uh, we've kind of brightened it up a little, brightened it up a little bit, reworked all of the, um, reworked all of the textures. The next gen games are actually using all of the original PC high res textures in, in most places, except in those instances where we've, uh, where we've obviously, yeah. Them up. Obviously, you can see the radiation. Because of the radiation, there are all sorts of creatures that yeah, you have to fight. Yeah. So you you know, th this uh, this level is um, your, your primary threat are, are, are mutant creatures. So there are kind of little hints as to what they might have, um, what they might have evolved from. Um, we also have a very strong uh, kind of human combat element in the game, and when uh, when faced against humans, it, it really turns into a much more kind of tactical shooter. We have a, a very strong stealth mechanic in there. Actually, you can right. see on his watch there at the moment that blue bar is actually your light meter, um, which is you know, pretty vital for, uh, for for stealth gameplay. So so long as that light is out, uh, you know you can't be seen. Uh, you're, you're 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 fully uh, you're, you're fully hidden. Can, by crouching, you can creep yes. around, make less sound, and get into some very uh, tactical firefights with a human AI. The mutants are just a lot more aggressive. You can try and avoid them or, or take them down if you can. If I remember correctly, you could also perform takedowns if you sneak behind. Enemies, yeah, right? so ag again, that was one of the you know one of the new improvements that we made um, in the original game. You kind of had to cycle in quite a cumbersome way through your weapons to get to the knife for, yeah. for, for melee, and that could be really frustrating. When you've got a pack of uh, a pack of mutants leaping at your face, so we changed that for Last Light. We gave the player uh, access to an instant melee, and then we also added uh, stealth kills and, and, and takedowns, so you can creep up on enemies, either choose to, to kill them or, or knock them out. Um, it's actually possible to, to play through uh, the entire game of Last Light with only killing one person throughout the whole game. Pretty much all the levels are designed to allow you to take a, sure. a, a lethal or a non-lethal route through the game. You can just see as uh, Artyom is looking at his watch now. Uh, you got that beep as we went down to less than a minute. You then have to swap out the um, swap out the filter on your on your gas mask. As I said, you have all of this resource management in the game. So your your torchlight uh, is powered by a by a battery, but that will actually run out of juice over time. It's also used to power your night vision that you'll acquire later in the game. When that happens, you have to bring out this hand charger and then you manually pump it up with the uh, with, with the trigger. 
Um, and some of the weapons in the game are uh, these pneumatic weapons. And again, the, the force of the projectile is determined by how much pressure is in the air tank. And the more you shoot, the, the dial will go down. And again, you have to crank those up. So there's this, this real kind of like a handmade, uh, handmade feel in the game. The, uh, the guns are all designed by our creative director, uh, Croft. He's actually a, a mechanical engineer, so most of these weapons are, could conceivably be made in a be yeah. made in, in real life. Actually, on the subject of the weapons, we've uh, you're not going to see it in this demo, but we've um, we've added this new weapon to the game sometime after Metro Last Light happened, and and, and I love the story. Um, a website in New Zealand ran a design a weapon competition for Metro Last Light, and they invited people to send in their in their designs. And the, the, the winning design was from this uh, like 18 year old design student in New Zealand. And he designed a shotgun made out of scavenged bicycle parts. Mm. And all the contraptions of the bicycle rotated the, 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 the barrels around. Anyway, the guys on the website who hosted the competition said, this is fantastic. It, wouldn't it be uh, amazing if, uh, if Fort Ray released it as DLC yeah. for the game? Well, I heard about this and, and sent it through to the team and said, what do you reckon, can we do it? And they said, yeah, we we think we think that would work. Thanks. Um, so they spent a, a, a ton of time actually building that. We were able to release it as, uh, as some DLC, but now we've put that gun back in the back in the in the main game. The Redux contains all the DLC. That was yeah. Released. So um, we've basically got these two two standalone games. So yeah. 2033 and Metro Last Light. We're releasing them each uh, individually as digital only titles right. for, um, I think, a, a really fantastic price, $25 each, mm -hmm. so kind of impulse territory, we hope, for people to, you know, maybe at least try one, and if they like it, they can get the other, or you can get both of them together in Metro Redux, mm -hmm. which is the um, which is the combined box set, and um, 2033 didn't have a, a huge amount of DLC, apart from Ranger Mode that was added later, Ranger Mode is included in, in all of them from the, from the start. Uh, for Metro Last Light, we um, we added a, a ton of season pass uh, content kind of over right. the summer, and all of that's included in uh, in the Metro Last Light package. Great. When is it out? Metro Redux is uh, out in the summer. That's already summer, so yeah. I guess that's pretty soon. Pretty we're soon, yeah. right around we're, the corner. We're on the final stretch now. We're going to have an exact date uh, fairly soon, which uh, we hope to hope to share. And it's out for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Uh, and we have a, a, a new upgraded Linux version coming later in the year, and Steam OS version. Great. Hugh, thank you so much. Thank you. That's very cool. Cheers. It's Metro Redux. Stay tuned. Next, we're going to look at Lords of the Fallen.